Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 52 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialists, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we are talking about that Megaport, which is an Australian based one stop shop for cloud services, has expanded its operations in Hong Kong through a new partnership with a local cloud company, which is eyeing up the fast-growing market in mainland China. Hi Dave, it's great to have you back on the Australia show, and I'm so glad you managed to fight your way through the snowstorms this week. Yeah, I made it, man. It's always great to be here. Looking forward to a great show. You know, a great opening question then for you, Dave, is do you think that the Australia cloud market is more China-focused now? Yeah, I, I, I think they have to be. I mean, um, you know, Australians selling to Australians isn't going to get Australia uh, much further down the road in terms of revenue opportunities. And I think that Megaport, really not, this isn't really about that company, this instance of a company, but the fact of the matter is that these small companies are, you know, moving into the China, mainland China market. Um, they're going to have a bit more of an understanding of the market than some of the European and uh, U.S.-based uh, companies, and I think that they're uh, they're really looking to make a lot of money. As you know, this is probably the you know second biggest economy in the world, and it's great. It's exploding right now. So if you go beyond kind of the trade wars and everything else that's going on, uh, there's money to be made there. Their their hunger for technology, and I think companies that are going to get there first with the best technology are going to end up winning the game. And these guys are one of many in Australia that are moving in that direction, and I think it's it's pretty much a logical move. How do you think this goes? This fares with people like AWS in in Australia and Alibaba in China. Where do you where do you see those partnerships aligning? What, do you see Australia moving towards a more of an Alibaba cloud or staying with AWS? How do you see this working? I think it'll be a, a mixture of AWS and and Microsoft. And uh, I think that um, uh, the Alibaba thing will have a bigger market impact in Australia than the than, and then AWS or, or Google. It's you know it's here. You don't see them much in the states, and I think that's really, you know, the reason they're in China. And there's, you know, probably some uh, political issues there within most of the countries. But also, people have a tendency just to deal with top, the top three companies, and we have AWS, Google, and Microsoft, and they don't want to deal with the four. So in essence, they're getting pushed out. But in Australia, they're a bit more open-minded and then also value-based, and there's no reason why. Uh, you couldn't cut a deal with Alibaba if you get a cheaper rate for the similar storage instances and compute instances like you can over the AWS systems. But I think the larger name brand companies are going to end up sticking with AWS and Microsoft and Google, where I think the uh, what I call the second tier companies are basically a billion dollars um, you know, and, and lower uh, are going to go with anything that's uh, cheap and adds value. And I think if that's Alibaba, that's that's where they're going to go. More so in the United States where you know, almost even the smaller companies go with the big guys, Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. Yeah, so it, it's very interesting, actually. There's a company or a, a consultancy firm, Markets and Markets, have actually done a, a market research, funnily enough, they're called Markets and Markets, and they've done a market research. It's uh, uncanny, isn't it? Uh, and they're looking at the size of the multi-cloud management market is expected to grow from, uh, in US dollars, this is, not Australian dollars, so 939.3 million, um, I think I said that right, 939.3 million US dollars, uh, which was the figure they got from uh, last year. And by 2021, they're expecting that to grow to 3.5 or 3.4 billion US dollars. So, I mean, they've calculated that represents an actual 29.6 uh, compound annual uh, growth rate. But, I mean, that's just phenomenal, isn't it, with that amount of growth in, in such a short space of time, Dave? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's even um, perhaps a bit scary growth because we don't have the talent to kind of keep up with the growth rates and make use of the technology people are buying. So it almost seems like, uh, um, you know, people are spending uh, thousands of dollars on Amazon Prime to get lots of things that they're not going to be able to use for a year and a half because they just don't have need for it now. They just want to buy it. And I think the, the core spending in technology ahead of the need is really what's going to be marked over the next couple of years. And we're just going to see people buying ahead of um, the business requirements that the business needs without really kind of an understanding how to deploy them. So I, my advice to the companies that are doing that, I think it's okay to leverage resources as you have them because what's occurring now, they're getting the budgets and they realize they have to spend the money to get the budget for next year. And we're at the end of a budgeting cycle toward the end of the year right now. So that's why you see so much money flowing into the market. But there has to be some purpose for the technology you're looking to buy. 
And so, you know, it's very similar to the old enterprise license agreements that, you know, we did 20 years ago or 30 years ago, where people spend a lot of money on basically these all you can eat licenses for the particular kinds of technology and never ended up deploying them. They just kind of sat on the shelf. And my concern with this, even though it's not a physical thing that you sit within your data center, is that people are going to buy too much technology too quickly and ultimately end up um, not deploying it and not adding value in the system. But it's good for the cloud providers. I mean, they're making money hand over fish just because everybody is moving as quickly as they can into the market. And certainly security's gotten better and performance has gotten better and all the aspects of it. There's really no reason to do it. There just has to be a balance between need and what your spend should be. Absolutely, need and spend uh, very, very important there. Dave, it moves us on nicely actually to your top three tips. I think you've just done a, a fantastic tip just there actually with need and spend. But yeah, I'm sure you've got some top tips uh, lined up uh, up your sleeve somewhere, haven't you? I just happen to have them right here in front of me. It's as if, as if by magic. <laughs> Yeah, as if by magic. Number one, don't limit your business to one geo, and that's a, a geographical region. And I, I think that a lot of companies that I run into are focusing on China and Asia Pac, and a lot of companies are focusing on um, you know the European market. A lot of companies are focused globally. I, I don't think you can be everywhere and do a good job everywhere, but I would nicely like to see you uh, spread a business across at least two or three different countries. The big problem with uh, with um, China and Australia and all these other things that they have economies that are independent of other economies and they may hold, uh, go into a bad economic downturn for a certain amount of time and that'll absolutely kill your business if you really just kind of depend on that economy for running your business. So keep that in mind. Monitor pricing to ensure that you are maxed out, you're maxing out the margin. Um, the reality is this is uh, the time when money can be made by lots of different cloud providers including uh, uh, the friends here that are, this article is about, Megaport. And you really need to figure out what the market will bear in terms of the margins that you get into. And I find that uh, a lot of uh, service providers, uh, managed service providers, which is really what these guys are, uh, either overcharge or undercharge. They never really kind of have it right in terms of what they should be uh, charging. And so there's ec there's uh, um, algorithms you can run and pricing models you can run to ensure that you're going to charge the right value for what you're looking to get. And many managed service providers overcharge and can't figure out why they're not making revenue, they're not shutting the deals, or they undercharge and they cut lots of deals, but they actually lose money on the deal. So keep that in mind. And security needs to be a cross-border focus. So if you're gonna do um, the China market out of Australia, as these guys did, or you're going to do the Asia Pac market, you're going to do um, the US market or the European market, you have to keep in mind that there's different security restrictions for each one of those. And so you can't co-mingle them. Encryption systems and different compliance issues and all those things have to be changed as you move from one geo to the other. While AWS may know this and Microsoft may know this because they've been do doing cross-border deals for the last five years, smaller companies I think can get burned because they really don't have the resources to focus on being excellent in all these different geo regions around security, but you have to make the investment or else you're gonna get in big trouble and you're gonna get pushed out of the market with, with kind of one incident. Yeah, exactly right. Great top tips there, Dave. I really appreciate that. And thanks for being part of the Australia show this week. Great to have you. It's always a pleasure. Excellent, and thanks for watching everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's show. I say that every week, and I really do mean it. And uh, you know, it takes time to put these together, and we really appreciate all the support that we get on social media. So thank you for watching. Uh, and you can get Dave on Twitter, which is at David Linticum. I'm on Twitter, at Nelson underscore Heliard. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, we're there. So come and connect with us, ask questions, join the team. And uh, yeah, Cloud Squad, I think. Hashtag Cloud Squad is something that is real, and that's happening on Twitter at the moment. So uh, become part of the hashtag Cloud Squad which is always awesome. David writes some great blogs as well, and uh, we've just published, I think, about six new blogs. So uh, get over to the website. There's a link below uh, for all the latest blogs that David's written for us as well. So check those out. Um, and we've got Ron Stitcher and iTunes as podcasts. So you don't just have to watch us. You can listen to us as well on the train or wherever you are. Um, so we're all over the place. So come and check us out. Thanks for watching, and until next week. <laughs>